What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Hamza Chimaev reveals plan for UFC 300. After his short notice win over Kamar Usman at UFC 294, Hamza Chimaev announced that he had suffered a hand injury in the bout and would be forced to the sidelines while he healed up. Despite the setback, Chimaev made it clear that his plan was to compete against the winner of the upcoming UFC 297 scrap between Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis. Unfortunately for the undefeated contender, despite the initial news that he would avoid surgery, he revealed via Instagram Live that he will undergo surgery in the next two weeks. In addition, he also notably clued fans in on his plan for a return, explaining, and I do surgery, operation, one, two weeks, after that, to recovery, come back, smash that. You should, uh, let's go, tell Dana White, make that happen. While Chemayev didn't name a potential opponent, he had previously stated that he's expecting to compete against the winner of the upcoming UFC 297 clash. Of course, at the same time, he's currently ranked number 9 on the UFC's official rankings, meaning he may have to fight a true middleweight contender before getting a crack at the belt. Next up, let's take a look at more information exposed during UFC lawsuit. The class action lawsuit against the UFC has seen more of the UFC's dark secrets exposed. In addition to the documents revealing just how much the promotion paid top fighters over the past 15 years, a series of incriminating emails has now surfaced as well. In one specific instance, former matchmaker Joe Silva expressed a desire to cut Rogerio Nogueira after the MMA legend expressed a desire to take a tune-up fight. With Silva writing to Lorenzo Fertitta, Rogerio Nogueira has flat out refused to fight Daniel Cormier. He says he wants someone easier after his layoff. He was jumping up and down to fight Rich Franklin. Would love to cut him, but he would just end up fighting Rampage Quentin Jackson in Bellator. In another instance, Silva wrote that he purposefully lowballed Nate Diaz when the Strike Force vet was nearing the end of his contract conspiring to give Diaz a tough fight with low-card placement as punishment should he refuse to accept the fight that was being offered. In that instance, Silva wrote, I lowballed them on purpose, the first offer, knowing they would turn it down. How about I come back with a 29 plus 29, 32 plus 32, 38 plus 38? If they turn it down, I put him in a prelim against a really tough guy for his last fight. With the case set to go to trial next year pending any changes, it seems likely that more and more information from the case will come to light. Next up, let's take a look at Conor McGregor gets disrespected by fighter. While Jeremy Stevens and Conor McGregor have never clashed inside the octagon, the two will forever be linked with one another after McGregor famously questioned, who the F is that guy? In response to Stevens at a UFC press conference many years ago. Heading into his BKFC clash on Saturday, Stevens participated in a Q&A during the Fight Week press conference, where he was asked about potentially welcoming McGregor to bare-knuckle boxing, given that the Irish star has expressed a desire to compete in the sport someday. He's gotta get off the blow first, you know? He's got to get off the steroids. He's got a long, long track ahead of him. You know, he's got a big uh, route with UFC. I think me, Eddie, Mike, we put it down in the UFC. You know, he's fought some fights, but now he's kind of running out of room. He's really got to fight the real deals, the guys that he's been avoiding. You know, I fought the Frankie Edgars, the guys that he he um, he avoided. So uh, that's a long shot away. It's not something I really think about, but you know, he can get it on the street for sure. His mom knows. Fans were quick to react to the situation, with one writing, This man is still butthurt that he was made into a forever gif. Another alleged that Stevens didn't want any piece of McGregor, regardless of the rule set, writing, Connor would brutalize Jeremy in BKFC, UFC, boxing, or any other combat sport. Jeremy is a high-profile journeyman. In addition to stating that he would like to one day compete in bare-knuckle boxing, McGregor also notably had a stare-down with Mike Perry in the ring, where he stood with a BKFC title belt. Although the situation fueled speculation that McGregor could look to dabble in bare-knuckle boxing in the future, nothing has ever come from the stunt. The way one fan sees things, McGregor will never go to BKFC, nor will he ever entertain the idea of fighting Stevens, making the whole situation a moot point, writing, Ha ha, what? Connor is not going to BKFC, let alone to fight Jeremy Stevens. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at Neil Magny breaks silence on Ian Gary's situation. Prior to Neil Magny and Ian Gary's clash earlier this year, the two men engaged in a bitter back and forth stemming from comments Magny made in the lead up to the fight, 
where he stated that he was accustomed to dolling out the type of beating he would put on Gary because of his experience disciplining his kids. The comment didn't sit well with Gary, who used the situation as fuel for trash talk leading up to the bout. Now, as Magny prepares for his UFC 297 scrap, he explained in an interview with Sports Skeeta how the situation impacted his custody case. That, that in itself had like a lot more consequences than just like um, nonsense at a press conference. There was literally uh, screenshots being taken of uh, headlines saying that like uh, I'm a child abuser and I do this uh, to my kids and that kind of thing. There were screenshots being um, taken and put into um, apps and things like that or be admissible in court where um, I'm literally fighting for uh, custody of my children so I'd be a present father for them and that kind of thing. So. Of course, as Magny explained that he is aware of, it's now Gary who is in headlines for his own controversy, with the undefeated star forced to set his social media accounts to private leading up to his clash with Vicente Luque. Next, let's take a look at UFC updates. On the heels of an exciting night of fights in Austin, Texas, let's take a look at some UFC updates leading up to the relocated UFC Fight Night Shanghai card this coming weekend, starting with an update from Dan Hooker who was forced to withdraw from a scheduled clash against Bobby Green in Austin this past weekend. After re-breaking his arm once more in the exact same spot while trying to rush his return, the fan favorite shared on social media that he was eager to get back to action. As he revealed, he underwent surgery to repair the break and is already on the mend, writing, not my first and definitely won't be my last time under the knife, haha. I can see how this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I'm built for this game. Just a scratch, baby. Can't wait to scrap again. So far, no timeline on when Hooker will look to return to action. However, the hope among fans is that he'll compete over the summer after recovering from his surgery. This weekend also saw some pretty big news in the flyweight division, with former champion Brandon Moreno taking on Amir Albazi on February 24th in Mexico City. According to reports, the fight is set to serve as a five-round co-main event scrap with Moreno looking to bounce back from a loss to Alexander Pantoja, and Albazi looking to cement his status as a contender in the division by extending a five-fight winning streak. With a number of exciting matchups and thrilling contenders, it's safe to say that the flyweight division is more competitive than ever before. Next, let's take a look at Sean Strickland goes off on UFC fighter. News recently surfaced indicating that former light heavyweight champion Jamal Hill had been arrested for domestic violence after a fight with his brother. The situation made headlines, with fans taking aim at Hill and middleweight champion Sean Strickland joining them. In his signature outspoken nature, Strickland took aim at Hill's brother after police were involved in what Strickland believes should have been a situation that stayed within the family. Strickland weighed in on the situation on social media, writing, You can get a domestic violence charge for fighting your brother? LMAO, I guess I've dodged some DV charges. If you haven't fought your brother, you ain't brothers, bottom line. Prior to the altercation, Hill had notably stood up for his brother online years before, after his brother was involved in a spat with lightweight Bobby Green at a bar. So far, no response yet from the former champ. However, Hill is known for responding to situations such as these on his YouTube channel, meaning a response could still be coming. Next, let's take a look at Tom Aspinall and Cyril Gaon go back and forth. While Tom Aspinall had previously called out Cyril Gaon in hopes of fighting the former interim champ in a title eliminator, Gaon reportedly had little interest in fighting the up-and-coming Aspinall. After Aspinall finished Sergei Pavlovich to secure the interim title, Gaon was quick to take to social media, calling him out while dubbing himself as the hunter and the newly minted interim champ as the one being pursued. Now, in an interview with Mirror Fighting, Aspinall responded to Gon's recent callouts, pointing out how ironic it is that the roles have flipped and Gon is the one who wants a fight with him. It's very strange that I called him out for a long time and then as soon as I get the title, he wants to fight me. We'll see what happens. We're gonna fight each other one day, so it's all good. I'm ranked number one in the world, but if you are top 10 in the world, then you are really, really good. We can all beat each other on any given day. There's not that much between us all. We have tiny gloves and are massive guys. Anything can happen at any time. So far, it's remained unclear when Aspinall will return to the octagon. With John Jones and Stipe Miocic expected to fight once the champ returns to action, Aspinall has continued to call for a fight in the meantime in order to stay active. Whether or not the UFC grants his wish, only time will tell. Dana White sends a warning to UFC sponsors. In a recent press conference, Dana came out and said that if sponsors aren't aligned with what he wants, he simply doesn't care what they say or want. Here's what Dana had to say. Just because you sponsor us doesn't mean you run this business and you're definitely not telling me what to do. That, that's a fact, that's never gonna happen, ever. So I've got this new um, mindset 
I look at uh, sponsorships like relationships, like being in a relationship with somebody. If I got to be in a relationship with somebody for six years, we better be aligned and we better, you know, think and feel the same way. Or you do your thing, do whatever you do, but don't ever fucking call me and tell me what, what you what you want me to do because you sponsor us. That is never going to happen. So if that's the type of person that you are, don't even bother trying to sponsor the UFC. Top comments. Dana White is a ruthless businessman. That's partly why he's been so successful. Imagine if this court case takes the UFC for billions and makes the UFC and PFL on level terms. Connor will headline 300 too, as if they won't cash in that record setter. Izzy don't want that rematch. They put those fake fights on the board before those so-called accidental leaks during interviews as a way to judge how interested people are in certain bouts. Y'all quit being simps. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.